have been killed, but the Al-Assad regime denies using weapons. Let's bring in our big guns of politics here, Treasurer Chris Bowen and Shadow Treasurer Joe Hockey. Good morning to both of you gentlemen. Chris, will the government intervene if this does turn out to be chemical warfare? This is a terrible thing, a terrible thing. We've had 100,000 people die in Syria already and the reports of chemical weapons are just deplorable, unacceptable. I've got a lot of, I know a lot of people from Syria, a lot of people where I live come from Syria, talking to them about their brothers, their sisters, their cousins in places like Aleppo and Damascus who are still there. Many people sought refuge in Syria from other places in the Middle East like Iraq when they were forced out of there. This is a humanitarian crisis. Yes, we would condemn obviously in the mm. strongest possible terms any use of chemical weapons and the international community really does need to come together and really take some some action here. And Joe, we're on the Security Council, aren't we? You know, do we we got to play tough with this? Oh, of course. When when chemical weapons are used uh, against our own people, they can be used in other circumstances. And uh, fact is, if the Syrian government has nothing to hide, they should open yep. the doors for all the UN uh, officials to go in there. And this is a test for Syria if they say that these events occurred because of the activity of the rebels, then they've got nothing to hide by opening the doors. So yeah. the UN now needs to properly report on it and then the world needs to respond accordingly. OK. okay. All right, let's focus back on the election campaign. Only two weeks to go. Are you uh, having fun? Absolutely. <laughs> 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 uh, are you natural? That's right. Naked? Yeah, it's oh, tight. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Just to be clear. <laughs> All right. Uh, is that? Are you I'm feeling in good shape. I've got a couple, I've got a couple of races you've to only, go. You've only had your stomach. <laughs> Kevin Rudd has copped a grilling from a makeup artist on the night of the debate. She posted on Facebook that he was the rudest client she's ever had. The comment was later taken down. Joe, you know Kevin. Does it prove that? Uh, the Kevin we see on camera isn't the Kevin we see off camera? Well, I think how you treat people privately reflects what you really think of them publicly. Mm -hmm. And you can have all the smiles and happiness uh, in public displays, but if you treat people poorly in your own life, privately, and then it says... Do you know him? Do you, uh, do you think well, he's... Well, he, he obviously... Does that surprise you? No. Wow. Oh. He okay. said he was going well, into the Well, I mean, it's zone. a pattern of behaviour, isn't it? I mean, you, you had the way he treated the crew on the aircraft, the government plane. You saw that video of what he, when he was screaming at the camera when he was previously Prime Minister and going off at his staff. You have reports of the way he treated the Chief of Defence when he became Prime Minister and left the Chief of Defence and the head of ASIO sitting in his office reception for hours and hours and hours. And you had a third of his Cabinet colleagues say there's no way they'd ever work with him again. Well, Chris? So it's not a one-off, Well, really. he said Let's he was going into the zone before the debate yeah. and he, he wanted three minutes... He doesn't like being in makeup. Oh. Um, <laughs> Well, how do you look, men? How do well, you handle makeup? You and I wear makeup every day, Chris. So <laughs> even before we go out together, so, you know, <laughs> let's go like... out together. <laughs> yeah. uh, look, let's let's deal with the facts here. I mean, um, this election will be decided on big issues. But I know Kevin Rudd very, very well. He treats everybody with respect, in my experience. Um, he treats all his staff with respect. He treats everybody he works with with respect. He asks after our family, checks on our, on how we're going. He's a good man. Now, when you're getting ready for a debate, sometimes, you know, when we're coming on here, I'm, so, I'm sure sometimes Joe's more talkative than other times down in the makeup room. Sometimes he's thinking about what he's going to so, say on the show, and other times I'm he's not very rude chatty. To people, though. Well, right. and neither is Kevin. And let's, neither right. is Kevin. Let's, right. let's move on to the latest poll. The Guardian Lonergan poll has Mr. Rudd's vote at 48% two party preferred. Well, Liberal candidate Bill Glasson is ahead of Mr. Rudd with 52%. Chris um, is. Kevin at risk of losing his own seat? No seat is taken for granted. No seat. There's not a safe seat in Australia. And I know Kevin takes his seat very, very seriously and works it very hard. Uh, and he'll be fighting to earn every last vote, as we all are. As we all are, earning every last vote in our electorate. Any MP, Labor or Liberal, who thinks they've got this election sewn up in their electorate deserves to be dealt with in their electorate. They've got to go out and earn every vote. What are you hearing, Joe, from Bill Glasson in that electorate? Well, Bill Glasson's a damn fine man. He's a former head of the AMA. He's a doctor. He's He's, he's one of the most respected doctors in uh, in Australia, and he's a, he's a good guy. I mean, he's a good local. Now, le leave it up to the electorate to decide, but it's the policies that matter. You know, Ford have, have stood down.
their workforce because of the government's announced changes to FBT. People's jobs are going. Uh, and, and because of the government's decisions, let's talk about those sort of things yep. because they're affecting people's lives right now and, and, and the only way to save the forward jobs is to have a change of government. I agree, Joe. And, it's the and policies that matter. So let's talk about your policy of shrugging, uh, slugging retirees and self-funded superannuants well, to pay wrong. for your completely overly wrong. expensive completely wrong. paid parental leave scheme. $1,000 a year if you've got uh, 500000 in shares. Mate, me, that, uh, how's it wrong? How's it wrong? You understand franking and you're, you're double taxing Australia's investors. Uh, that is completely wrong. How's it wrong? Because, well, I tell you, for a start, we're getting rid of the carbon tax, we're getting rid of no, the mate, mining tax, no, no, don't we're giving subject, people personally... Though. Well, no, it's because it's about... You said per, retirees are going to yeah, be worse off. They are. Mate, they are going to be significantly better off because we have put in place a suite of measures that actually make the economy stronger, deliver job security and deliver That's prosperity. That's just your normal bluff and bluster, no, this, Joe, because you're what? going to double tax and, Australian investors. I you are the one double taxing Australian That's investors. Complete rubbish. That's your policy. You can't Hang deny on, you've it. You've hit superannuation with $9 billion of additional taxes. You're going to charge this tax uh, twice. The company pays it and then the investor pays it. This is what happens it. when you get into policy. Great debate. Great debate. We love this sort of stuff. We're out of time, but I wanted to ask Chris how Sydney Airport hasn't paid any tax well, it's a good question. Uh, Joe and I were just talking about that. <laughs> I, think, I, I think it's one thing the Treasurer and the Shadow Treasurer would agree with, yeah, agree with on absolutely. the caretaker period. That, uh, uh, 100 that, bucks for 15 minutes of parking. Yeah. Yeah. Don't pay any it's more than that. Is that going? It's more yeah. than that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys, thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Keep it going. Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. <laughs> right there. Australia's cheering you <laughs> on. Two weeks. I'm a Melbourne cat. I love Joe's woohoo. <laughs> Seven news headlines are next. And if you've been to the Cash Cow competition, stand by the phone. We could be calling you 10 grand in the next.